Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melody Production, and today I thought I'd show you how you can use M Auto Dynamic EQ or M Dynamic EQ to EQ your guitars and make them sound smoother or you know less muddy, etc. So I've been working on something, and I had a lead sound, and it just wasn't sounding right. It had a little bit too much fizz and a little bit too much boxiness, etc. Uh, actually, it's not that bad, but I'll let you hear it here. Okay, so that's what we have. I'm hearing a little bit of harshness, and no, it's just not really sounding right. So let's fix that. Now, there's lots of things we can do here. I really want to use the dynamic features of this. If you don't need the dynamic features, you can just use MEQ. But for this, I like to use the dynamics. I think it makes it sound better. Now, if you're wondering, like, okay, where is everything? You can use this areas uh, to find, like, the mids, high mids, etc. Now, I already did some high-pass filtering, so I cut off the low, so that part's kind of okay. But where I'm hearing problems is, like, this high mid area. So we're going to double-click that in here. You don't have to use that. I could move the four over if I wanted to, but I'll use that for something else. I'm just going to use this here. And what we want to do is we want to find where our problem is. So I'm just going to loop this so it plays over and over again. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen in here to where it is. Let's move the Q value in here like this so it's a little bit sharper. And I'm going to hit auto listen so that way when we listen we're just hearing this band here like this. So now that to me is like sounding really harsh. So let's get rid of that. Now I want to use the dynamics for this, but first what I want to do is just see about like how far I need to move this down. I think the Q value is good, but let's move the gain down until we find something that, you know, sounds good enough, I guess. So here we go. I used the dynamic one at first, which I didn't mean to do that, but it's about the same here. I think around like uh, seven, eight sounds good. So what I'm gonna do here is I can just click this or I can right click on the actual node there. Either one's okay. And what we're gonna do is use these dynamics here. What I wanna do is let's ch change the attack. Since this is up high, we can actually use a faster attack. Let's try like one millisecond here. We have the RMS length, but I actually want this to work on, you know, peak frequency. So I'm going to set that at zero. The peak hold there is okay. I actually don't mind that. And let's set the release a little bit uh, long. I don't want this too short because then it's going to cause distortion by going up and down. Although on an EQ, it may not be that bad. So let's set this longer. I can actually even set this to the beat. Let's 250, 250 milliseconds. Sounds good. Now, the main thing is we need to adjust the threshold and the dynamics. So it's going down about, what, negative eight or so. Let's make it just a little bit more than that. Let's try negative 10 for our dynamics. So that's going to be the maximum level it can go down. And then what we're going to do is adjust our threshold. As we play it, you'll see how far it goes uh, here on the level guide. And let's just bring it down. Okay, now you see here it's actually working. And what I might want to do is just go in here and we can enable it and disable it. So let's listen to it disabled and enabled. Now, this actually may not be doing enough. So we can look in here and see. What is the maximum amount of gain reduction here? We'll look here and we can see the side what it's doing. I feel like it needs a little bit more. Now we can move the threshold down or we can move the level gain up like this.
Now I can hear that that's working fairly clearly and I like what it's doing. But another thing we can do here is we can add the harmonics. You might be wondering like, what's that do? If we just move it like this, it's not going to do much. Uh, let's turn off the dynamics for a second. So just so you can see this. If I move the gain down here, this and I use the harmonics, you'll see, oh, it works like that. And it creates like harmonics. In this case, it'll be 12 semitones up. Now, if we turn this off here and we use the dynamics, you'll see like, hey, it's not working. If you have that, make sure you're using dynamics by fundamental here. So now when we play it, you should see it uh, bringing down those uh, harmonics there like this. So you can hear that it's taking off like quite a bit of harshness. You can also adjust the semitones. So here they're at 12 uh, semitones, but we can move that down if you want. And you also see the maximum count here, and that's how many harmonics there are. We don't need anywhere near that many. So we can just turn this down to like, let's say two or something. Let's see that. And just that however you want. Sometimes you'll notice like, oh, okay, I'm hearing like resonances, you know, every octave or something. And you just set the semitones at 12 where it is at, uh, you know, uh, at default. But if you hear like some other place, you can actually just move this down. It doesn't even have to be in complete semitones here until you get what you want. So that's a you know, cool thing so you don't have to waste another band if you don't want to. So I think this is sounding good, but I'm also hearing a little bit of mud somewhere in the mid range, maybe the mids or low mids. So let's turn that auto listen on again and let's move around this until we find it. Okay, I think it's around there. Make sure this is here. I might want to decrease the bandwidth, maybe a little bit over one or so like this. And now we're going to do the exact same thing. And let's bring this down until we can hear it and it sounds more like what we want. I think about eight or nine might be good. So we'll go in here, do the exact same thing. Let's say, since it's eight or nine, let's maybe try like 12 or so. <laughs> that may be too much. Um, set the auto attack. Let's make this a little bit longer, but it doesn't have to be too long. Do the same thing again, 250. Don't need the RMS length. And let's start moving the threshold. Okay, now let's hear it on and off. Now to me, that's doing a good job of just getting rid of the boxiness. So now I'm getting a lot less harsh and I'm getting a lot less boxy, which is what we wanted. Now, one thing you might notice is the input and output sometimes is not the same. So what we're gonna do is play and just hit the set button and that should move our output to balance the ins and outs automatically. Okay, it added about three decibels there. That should be right. And of course, if you think like, oh, you know, I need a little bit less or more, you can just move that manually. But now let's do the bypass on and off before and after.
me, that sounds much better. Now, when I first listened to it, it's like, those frequencies just bothered me a little bit. It wasn't that bad. But in contrast, going from the starting position to this, this sounds much better now. So by using M Auto Dynamic EQ, you can get that better sound. And unlike a static EQ, you don't want to like cut those frequencies all the time. This just gives you just enough right when you need it. So uh, I recommend using it for this. Uh, I don't know, I started using uh, M Turbo EQ all the time and I kind of forgot about this, but this is really an awesome tool for shaping your guitar sounds. So if you like this, leave me a like and leave me any questions or comments down below and be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.